Thank you. This is a very unfortunate event that we see on a daily basis. It's causing 1.3 million deaths a year, 35 million injuries or disabilities. It's the ninth leading cause of death globally, and it's costing $518 billion annually to deal with road car crashes. And the question is, can we use machine learning to fight this? And the answer is yes. We're going to use ArcGIS with Azure Machine Learning to predict the probability of accidents per segment, per hour, in Utah. But before jumping to machine learning, we asked ourselves, what, co what could cause an accident in the first place? Is it weather features like temperature, rain, fog, or time features like time of the day, rush hour, day of the week, or spatial features like proximity to intersections, or road seniority, or the direction of the road, or the sun direction, or other factors? In fact, we believe we are dealing with tens of variables. And the kind of data we are analyzing to train our model is really large. We are talking about seven years of data, 400,000 accidents, 500,000 segments. It's nearly impossible for any human being to manually analyze this and predict, right? But we think we have a shot with machine learning. So what we're really going to do is the following. We're going to develop our model using ArcGIS Pro to prepare the training data set and pass it to Azure Machine Learning Workbench to train our model. Once we have a trained model, we want to deploy this into production. So using Azure Cloud Services, we're going to deploy our model on a Kubernetes cluster, and this is a Dockerized container. And once the model is deployed in production, you can think that it will need real-time feeds to produce results and predictions, right? And hence, the need for ArcGIS Enterprise on Azure. So the model would receive different feeds, like the time and the weather feeds, produce predictions for the accidents, and send it back to ArcGIS Enterprise. Once it's available on Enterprise, it could be accessible to the whole company, right? So a single source of a system of engagement where people can develop apps, web maps, etc. We have built a geoprocessing service that acts as a web tool that would invoke the model either in hourly schedules to produce hourly information products or dynamically as needed. So as you can see, we have the data, the model, and the analysis all in one place in the cloud. So why don't we start seeing this into action? Let's have a look. So what we really started to do through the demo that you're going to see right now is we have collected all the data sources, like the accidents of the seven years, the road network layer. We have spatially joined these, added the average daily traffic for every segment in Utah, the intersections, whether they are signalized or not, weather feeds coming from about 27 weather stations, as you can see, there are lots of accidents happening near intersections, so we thought about proximity to intersections as a feature to our model, and we extracted different spatial features as well, like the road curvature or seniority, the road direction, the number of lanes, the road width, etc. And we added the billboards data set to see if there is correlation between the location of billboards and accidents. Now, all of this processing could be automated using ArcPy. We have used Python through ArcPy to create our geo database and get our data, whether from online sources or physical sources, and did some data processing, and really, most importantly, extracted the spatial features. So the kind of features I've been talking about, which is proximity to intersections, the direction of the road, the road curvature, and other features. And finally, we joined the weather feeds and the road collisions to road segments. And after we did so, we want to load this kind of data to the Azure environment. So the first step is using, is using the Python API to load the data from the Geo database to the CSVs, and then transferring those CSVs to Azure Blobs, which is an amazing data storage mechanism. Once, the data is, once our training data is available in Azure Blob storage, now it's accessible through the Azure Machine Learning Workbench. So let's have a look at this. So the first thing. Azure Machine Learning Workbench provides amazing data wrangling and preparation experience. You can see that this is our training data set. So for every accident, we have different spatial weather and temporal features, like 40 features in total. So you can see here that we have the speed limit, the surface type, 
the road orientation, some weather data, etc. So we can do lots of things here, like, for example, removing columns, producing histograms, producing column statistics, you name it. So once we think our data is ready for training, we just start the training process. So basically what we're doing is we load our training data that you guys have just seen, and we start to select our model, which is gradient boosting. Gradient boosting is a very powerful machine learning technique. Not only it's good with predictions, but explaining why these predictions happen in the first place. So we are training, we are splitting our data into 90% training, 10% testing for validation. We are optimizing some parameters like the maximum depth per tree, the number of trees, and others. And we are just starting the training. One other important aspect of Azure Machine Learning is the Azure Log Service. It's a very interesting service that you can log and record the different statistics of your model that you want to visualize after that. So let's have a look at the output of the Azure Log Service. One important aspect in the data science process is that you iterate continuously. So we would want to have insights along the training process, like what's the duration of the training? What's the uh, value of the F1 score, the precision, the recall, the accuracy, etc. cetera? Asian Machine Learning records every cycle of those training. You can click on any cycle and explore it in more detail to help see how is your training process going into action. So for that cycle, we can see all of these details, like the scores I've been talking about. And you can see the visualizations we have been capturing through the Azure Log Service. So now we think we have a trained model that is producing good results, and we want to deploy it into production to be accessible to the whole enterprise. Azure Machine Learning has a dramatically amazing experience to help you deploy your model really easily. So the score file, you're going to find it as a default file in any kind of Azure Machine Learning project. And it comes with a skeleton that helps you develop the needed functions. So for example, defining the schema for the REST API for the model, initializing your model, like passing the data and the model itself. And finally, the scoring function, which is the function that's going to take the real-time input, like the time and weather, and produce the output. And the final stage here is deploying that model to the Kubernetes cluster using the Azure Cloud Services. And what's really good about this is the scalability. So it scales dynamically based on the need. right? So as the number of users, as the number of requests grow, it scales dynamically. So let's have a look into the results of that model. So again, what we want to do is predicting the probability of risk per segment per hour. Today is December 3rd. It's a rainy and icy day, and it's 3 PM. We are close to the rush hour. And we are seeing the Woods Cross area in the Salt Lake City. So where is our algorithm predicted the highest risks? Here we go. Red is the highest risk. Orange is still high, but not as red. And green is the least, which is safe. We can see that the risk is mainly in the interstates and highways and some internal roads here. So what about seeing where the accidents did actually happen? Interesting. They are happening mostly on those segments we have predicted, not only on the highways and the major ways, but some inner roads as well, like that one here and that other one here. And you can explore the degree of, and the effect of road curvature on that. And here's South, South Salt Lake area, which is really near to the uh, South, uh, Salt Lake downtown. So our model predicts that those interstates on highways are really risky, and some internal areas here. You can see, for example, that this is more greenish. This is a more reddish and orange area. And again, the accidents are happening on those intersections we have predicted. And we can see a pattern here that many of these accidents in the inner roads are happening on or near very near to intersections. Finally, for the South Valley Regional Airport, these are the model predictions, and these are the actual accidents. Again, some internal and curvy roads besides the highways. So what we have seen today is using ArcGIS with the powerful Asian machine learning tools to help predict the probability of accidents per segment per hour and fight this global phenomena and save more lives. Thank you. Thank you.